Your health is your wealth. Good news from El Paso is underwritten by Grace Pharmacy, 11140 La Quinta Place. Welcome to Good News from El Paso. We are very pleased you are with us again today for us to share the wonderful things our Father has given to us and what Jesus died for to restore to us again. Welcome. Honey, please, can you welcome our wonderful audience today? Yes, indeed. Thank you for joining us and thank you for staying with us this year. And remember, Jesus loves you greatly and we love you. You will enjoy this program. Stay put. Wonderful, wonderful. So before we continue, let us, as usual, go to our Father in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all you have prepared for us this day. We thank you that you've gone before us and made our way perfect. We thank you for all the blessings, all the wonderful people we are going to meet today, and all the things we encounter or going to encounter. You've made provision for us to succeed and pro progress. We thank you for the blessings this day in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Our topic today is this. Have you surrendered your kingdom? That's a question that every Christian will have to answer. In every kingdom, there must be a king. In every nation, there must be a leader. And it's this king that gives orders in his kingdom and decides who stays or does not stay in his kingdom? What exists or what does not exist in his or her kingdom? You will say, a lot of people say, well, the, the, the devil is the, kingdom, the king of this earth. No, he's not. He used to be, before Christ came, we were before we sinned. He took over when we sinned. Christ restored it back to us. So we are back in our kingship. So Jesus told us in the book of Revelation, when the Bible tells us that we have been made priests and kings. So how can God make us kings without a kingdom? So that is what we are going to hear today. Who owns this world? Who owns this kingdom? So let us hear. Honey, do you, who do you think owns this kingdom? Well, let's go first to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Amen. And hear what God said. Genesis 1. 26 to 28, I am reading from Amplified. And God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness, and let them have complete authority, dominion, over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the beasts, and over all of the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, using all his vast resources in the service of God and man, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing creature that moves upon the earth. So we hear it. God has put us on this earth to have dominion, to have complete authority over all he created, both in the air, in the sea, on the land. So we are kings in this earth. We are kings in this earth. So our kingdom is the whole earth, right? Right, honey, right, right, right. So, our kingdom is the earth. What other creatures we can say in this world have dominion over their kingdom? Now, if we go into the sea, in the sea you have the sharks, you have the uh, crocodiles, you have other flesh-eating uh, creatures in the, in the sea. And when you get in there as a human being or anything gets in there, they will let you know that you're in the wrong place. I mean, they will not tolerate your existence. They will say, hey, this is my domain. This is my kingdom. You have no right being here. Go where the sharks are. They will let you know that you are in the wrong place. If you go into the forest, 
into the den of lions. Now, there's so many things in there, so many lions there. And you try to rule in that place, they will let you know, hey, you are in the wrong place. So you get out of this place. That is not your place. You go to the sky. You see the moon, the sun, the stars. That is their domain. There is no air there. And you, as a human being, just say, well, I'm just going up there with no gadgets. We'll come to that. They you just go there, they, you will know that that is not your place. This is the only place God has given us with flesh. This is the only place we can rule. The enemy cannot rule here. He doesn't have flesh. He, the gold means nothing to him. The diamond and silver mean nothing to him. The beautiful cars and houses you are living don't mean anything to him. Because he doesn't have flesh to enjoy them. This is our place. And it is about time we realize that this is our kingdom. Honey, isn't that true? That is true. Uh, obviously, now listen. We, are, we might be preaching to the choir. But this choir needs to rise up and know whose they are and what we have. We own this earth. But when you look at it, it looks like the Christians are now being staying at the back burner. Why is that? We are reiterating this thing, reminding us of what authority we have, the dominion we have. Now, God is not joking when he puts this in the word of God, in the Bible. And it is for us. Look at even what 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 21 to 23 said. I'm just going to, I'm not paraphrasing. I'm not reading it. I'm just telling you what it says. All things are mine. All things are yours. All these things are in the Bible because we belong to Jesus Christ. Therefore, all things are ours. The earth is ours. And when you look at yourself, ask yourself, am I enjoying this earth? Am I taking authority in this earth like I'm supposed to? See, everything is standing and taking authority. And we are like, what is going on? So this is our wake-up call this year, you know. We started with, uh, are you prepared for 2019? So this is also in reference to that. So the point is this. The lions in the forest, remember they call them king of the forest. That's their domain. And in this earth, we are kings. God has set that, set us apart for it. Are we reigning? Are we ruling? And are we taking authority and dominion over the situations over your body, your, over the sick people. See, when you go out there, the hospitals are full of sick people and the Christians are still around. What are we doing? So let us rise up. This is our wake up call. So the bees in, in their hives, you don't go to the bees, beehive, and then uh, without any covering and expect to come out uh, safe. No. Every creature, they are doing their own work, taking authority in their domain. This is our domain. And let us rise up and start taking authority, start exercising our dominion and rule to glorify the name of the Lord. I think what's going on is we do not put our king, the king of all kings, Jesus Christ, ahead. We do not put him forward. We do not remember that he's with us. We need to start doing that. We need to put him forward, focus on him. And we need to know that he is the I am. And when he's with you, because he's with you, Christians, then you cannot be defeated. You cannot fail. Fear has no place in your life. Sickness and disease, what are they? They are under your feet. Take authority over them. So this is our wake-up call still. So we are waking up and say, enough is enough. Let us rise up and be counted. Wonderful, wonderful. So what we are basically saying here, or what, not what we are saying, but what the scripture is telling us is this. When you look at these other creatures, they have their domain. You cannot go there. They say, okay, this is what we allow. This is what we don't allow. Why do we allow sickness in our kingdom? Why do we allow poverty in our kingdom? You see, not only do we have the earth, but we have the whole earth. And that is why the lions, though they have their domain in the forest, they cannot come on there and say, okay, now you get out, I'm taking charge. 
No, but we can go in their domain well equipped with guns and everything, and we can force them out of it because we have rulership over the whole earth. Divers can go into the sea, even where the sharks are, and perform whatever thing they want to do because as human beings, we still have authority over there. Remember God said, he made man in his image and likeness. He gave him power over the birds of the air, over the fish in the sea, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So we, as kings of the whole earth, can exercise our authority, which these other creatures cannot. But they can exercise their authority in their little domains. For example, we have this country today, the United States of America. We have a president who is in charge of the whole country. But we have governors who govern their own areas. They take charge of their own areas. But their authority is always overruled by the authority of the president. So those little, coming to what we are saying, these creatures have dominions, authority in their own localities. But we, as a king over the earth, have authority and power over them. So that is what that means. Now, the thing is this, the question is, how did we obtain the dominion over the whole earth? We read it in this scripture here that God said, he blessed man, gave him power over the work of his hand. Again, he said, he said that the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. So the earth is ours. It is for you and me. It's for the sons of men. He didn't give it to, the, to, to Satan and his cohorts. No, he gave it to me and you. He didn't give it to the angels. He gave it to you and me. Isn't it a time we start deporting from our kingdom things that are not supposed to be there? Isn't it about time we guard this kingdom? Every country guards its borders. We guard the people coming from the sea. We have the guards over there. You're coming from the airport. You have the immigration officers. You're coming from the land. There are borders. So why is it that our borders are open? Why are we not guarding our borders? Because of ignorance, and the Lord said, my children are perishing for lack of knowledge. It's about time we remember and get up. You see, the lions in their dens, they guard their territory because of their powerful muscles. They guard it. The sharks in the sea, they guard their area with their strong mouth, their strong teeth. What is the power we have to guard our territory? The words. The word of God in our mouth is stronger than anything that anyone will have. So remember, we have a kingdom, and we, have, we own everything in it, and we have to guard it. Honey, isn't that true? Yes, it is true. And listen, we are not telling you what you have not heard or what you do not know. So what is keeping us from rising up and taking over? What is it that is keeping us? Keeping us? Would it be that I look at it this way. If you are communi communing, fellowshipping with the Most High, your own Lord, your own King, that made you King, if you will fellowship with Him every time, not just when we wake up in the morning or when we go to bed, in our daily walk, even during lunch, you don't have to stop for five minutes and start praying. You can, anytime you are doing the work of the Lord, you are communing with, you are fellowshipping with the Lord. You need to have the concept, you have the mindset of Christ with me, Christ in me, Christ Jesus, the Holy Ghost in me. Remember, with that in your mind, who can stand against you? The Word of God says nobody. So God said, hell is for Satan and his co-host. Hell is for Satan, it's not for human beings. He did not prepare it for people, but people are going there. Yeah. So what do we do? We need to set some people free, you know? Share the good news. Tell them what this Jesus that you have received. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. It tells us right there that we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, from the kingdom of Satan, and translated to the kingdom of God's dear son. So... If we have been translated, why would we allow the devil, Satan, to come into our own territory, into our own kingdom, to tell us, to make us afraid, to make us anxious, to steal from us, to even kill because of diseases, to make some people think poverty instead of rich, and then they act poor and become poor? 
Why is that? The devil has left his own hell and he's right here ravaging the earth that we are supposed to rule over. Well, guess what? Somebody says, well, it's easier said than done. Well, you keep saying that, then you live defeated. Arise and shine. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, upon us, the, the righteous, the Christians. So let us wake up. Yes, some, does it mean that uh, the devil will not, touch, uh, will not harass you? He's not supposed to. Actually, he's not supposed to harass you. He can try, but you remember once you are in Christ. Remember Peter. When Peter had his eyes on Jesus, he continued walking on the water. If we have our eyes on Jesus, the I am, we will never be defeated. Put that on the wall somewhere. Put that in the bank. Start fellowshipping with this Jesus. Have the mindset. Satan cannot rule over us. He cannot. He does not have that authority. It has been taken from him. Jesus did. He cannot tell us where to go, where not to go. Oh, well, I'm afraid of height. I can't fly. I'm afraid of the elevator. I uh, cannot be in the, in, in the closed space. Who said? So know who you are and become righteously indignant. Are you not tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired? Be the head and not the tail. Be above only and not beneath. Be bold and not be fearful. Arise and shine. Honestly speaking, let us make Jesus proud. Let us make him proud. Because hell is for the devil and his angels. And the earth, this earth is ours. Let us start ruling. Let us start ruling. So we rule and we reign over all. That's what God said. And we take him by his word. He cannot lie. I said it again. He cannot lie. We have been saying this. And this is the year of possession of all that is yours. Jesus has given it freely and we are taking it by force. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Stop standing and waiting to hear from the, from the Lord, to hear what the Lord is doing, to hear what the Lord is saying. The Lord said it all right here. It's his word. So let us take dominion and authority in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, as my wife was saying here, or we were saying here is this. Every nation, every kingdom has its uh, constitution. There's a constitution of America, Britain, Germany, France. They all have their constitutions. You are a king. What is your constitution in your kingdom? What do you allow and what don't you allow? Do you allow, okay, I have a kingdom, but my doors are open, my, my borders are open? Is that the way you'll be, you'll be destroyed completely if you don't have a rule, if you don't have a constitution, if you don't have a principle guarding your kingdom? And these principles are not what you make up. These principles are already given you in the scriptures by your creator. He said you have dominion over the fish of the sea. You have dominion over the birds in the air. You have dominion over all the earth. So you have dominion over every living thing that moves upon this earth. You see, you say, but how, how do I do it? He told you. A man is justified by the words of his lips or condemned by the words of his lips. Your power is in your tongue. Between your upper lip and your lower lip, that is your power. You must use it to rule your earth. There's no other way. And you do it by faith. Your faith filled words. When you say by his stripes I'm healed and the pain is still there, ignore it. Don't take your mind again to that pain. Let your mind stay on that word. By his stripes I am healed. Now, if it's a financial challenge, you say the Lord has supplied all my need according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When those words have gone out of your mouth, see yourself in that financial supply. See yourself blessed. That's how you rule your head. You rule it with authority and with power. You exercise dominion over your world. This is your world. You have nowhere else to live. Can you live in the sea? No, you can't. Can you leave your house today and run and go and live in the, uh, in the desert? No, you cannot live in the Sahara Desert. You cannot live in the jungle. This is your place. You have made yourself available and everything is ready for you. So if you leave this place, you have nowhere else to go. The only thing God told us is that when we leave the flesh, 
If we live righteously, they will go to heaven. But if you don't, there's only another place for you to go, and that's hell, which is not even prepared for you. So this is your opportunity. Take care of your earth. While taking care of your earth, enjoying your earth, pre be ready for heaven. And the way you be ready for heaven will let you know. And for you Christians, you already know. When you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says your name is already written in the last book of life. You are saved. But being saved does not guarantee you that now you are rich or you are healthy. No. There are principles you have to follow to enjoy health. There are principles you have to follow to enjoy prosperity. And that is why my, your father who saved you said, you are going through all these pains because of lack of knowledge. So you have to have the knowledge. You have to learn. You have to understand. You have to know the principles of this kingdom and the principles of this earth. And we are told that without this faith, it is impossible to please God. And pleasing God doesn't mean we've got to make God going to jump from his head and say, oh, I'm happy, I'm happy. No. God says he is pleased when you prosper. So your prosperity, it brings up joy to the Lord. Your perfect health brings up joy to the Lord. If you are not healthy, how can you go and tell people about Jesus Christ? If you are not healthy, how can you help the poor? Which the Lord says the poor will always be with you. Because there are people who will never come to this knowledge. They either they have not been told or they, are, they, don't, they really don't, haven't put the effort to gain it. So it's your position and my position, our place, not only to enjoy this world and rule it, but to help others come to the knowledge of this truth. So what do you do in this world? To help, to, what do you do to rule this earth? Your words, through faith, through your faith-filled words. And what does you do in this world? You eliminate whatever is not wanted in your world. Jesus told you, cast out the devil. Poverty is the devil. The spirit of the devil, cast it out. Sickness is a spirit, cast it out. Ignorance is a demon, cast it out. Replace it by knowledge. Tell them, hey, you do not exist here. You are an unwanted immigrant and I deport you. It's, it's spiritually right. Send them out of your kingdom. This is your place. They have their own place, let them go to their own place and you stay in your place. Honey, isn't that true? Obviously. Uh, it is true. Now, the word of God is true. That's what we are banking on. The word of God is our bread. It's our meat. It's our meat. The Christians, that's our food we eat. So when we know this word of God and it's working in our lives, see, a lot of times, let us not just depend on uh, this, what we heard from the TV, what we heard from the radio, what we heard from maybe uh, somebody that is saying something that is not according to the word of God. If you know this word of God, you will never be deceived. You can never be deceived. So don't give room to the devil. The Bible tells us that. That's one way of staying uh, in victory. Don't allow the devil one more inch because you usually say it, if you give him one, one inch, he will take one mile. So we are sons of God, heirs of God, joint heir with Christ Jesus. And he says, call those things that be not as though they are. And you do it consistently. You say, well, stop reasoning about what God said. See, that reasoning is why we are not moving and forging ahead with, like God wants us to. Just take the word of God like a child. You tell your child... I will take you to Disneyland, let's say, for example. And the child will say, when? And you say, when? That child will never forget it. He will keep reminding you about it until you take that child to uh, Disneyland. So this is the same thing with the word of God. Stand on it. Stand fixed and don't relent on it. Arise and take your place in Christ Jesus. Put him forward. Because once you know who you are, then you, you can stand behind him and boast and tell the devil where to go. Tell sickness where to go. Tell the mind that is trying to get you to think otherwise uh, from what. Tell things where to go that you don't want. Call from the kingdom of God that which you want. That's what God has said. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Look at that. God cannot lie. He's waiting for us to start living like he said in the Bible. 
and that's our heritage. This word of God is our heritage. So let us stop giving room to the devil to start messing around with us. Enough of that. This moment, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that our minds will align up with the spirit of the Lord in us, our whole entire being even. And we need, Lord, we ask, actually we call forth right now, bold spirit, bold spirit. And spirit of laziness will cast you out because we are the Lord's and we are according to his plan. We are according to his purpose and we reign in this world as Christ Jesus now and forever. Father, we thank you for it because this is our heritage. We, are, we have arisen and we cannot move around that mountain one more day. We refuse in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, like my wife read here in the scripture. He said, have dominion. He said, subdue it. If, why can we, you subdue it? You say, no, I don't want this. And then not only do we subdue it, they replenish. It says subdue it and replenish the earth. So if there's anything here which is lacking, we replenish it. From where? From within. The kingdom of God is within you and out of you is flowing rivers of living water. So we may come on this well in a series of programs coming from time to time. We may come back to this. But let this dawn on you today. You are a king and this is your kingdom. So for you Christians, this is a wake-up call. For you non-Christians, hey, do you want a kingdom? Come and join us. And the way to join us is easy. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Confess him. And as soon as you say he's my Savior, you confess him as your Lord, your name will be written in the last book of the, of the Lamb, of the and you earth. automatically become a king on this earth. So let us lead you into this prayer of salvation now. Say, dear Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Forgive all my sins. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I know he died on the cross for me. He rose again. And I know he's coming again. Today I yield to Jesus Christ. I yield to you as my father. And I believe that from this moment forward, I am born again. I'm a child of God. If you say that prayer, you are saved. Now, remember, be you now transformed by the renewing of your mind. You are now a new creature. You are now in the house of God. You are free to be a king. Go and rule. There's a crown of gold upon your head. Take charge and let the devil know that this is my earth and I'm not going to leave it to anybody else. And remember, Jesus, Jesus loves, you. loves you. And we love you. And we love you very, God very bless much. you. Have a wonderful day. Rule in your kingdom. Hallelujah. You can rule do it. in your kingdom. You can do you it. You can do it. is your wealth. Good news from El Paso is underwritten by Grace Pharmacy 11140 La Quinta Place.